Kim Sa xin gửi lời chào thân thương nhất đến với quý khán thính giả của đài truyền hình Việt Hải Ngoại và cũng xin chào đón quý vị vào chương trình Up Close and Personal hôm nay với Christine Sa. À, kính thưa quý vị, lần đầu tiên xuất hiện trên màn ảnh của đài truyền hình Việt Hải Ngoại hôm nay Christine Sa rất là hân hạnh xin giới thiệu đến với quý vị à, nhạc sĩ Tony T. Nguyễn. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, you are watching Up Close and Personal with myself, Christine Sa on VHN TV. And uh, today it is my great pleasure to introduce a musician that I've admired for quite a little time now. His name is Tony T. Wing, and we caught up with him at the Artisan's Label Recording Studios. Follow me. It's time for me to leave Go home and face my reality A place where I can feel The love that everyone needs So come and join world of mine will share the rest of our lives there are times where we'll cry and times where we'll cry it all depends on how we see our little kính chào quý vị của đài VHN We're in the studios at Artisan's Label Studios located on Fender Avenue in Fullerton. Well, I remembering looking back at photos and stuff, about five years old I was sitting at an organ and um, I, I remember just, I remember, I remember the organ, but you know, I don't remember what I played on it, but um, my dad would use to hum me or sing me melodies or play songs and go, oh, can you learn this this nice music here and I would listen to it and like figure it out by listening and just playing, playing by ear and so um and that's when I started I think and then went elementary school to through high, high school and college I um took on music classes and everything and so um I just kept going I wrote music performed music um I went to school for music composition um the reason because I wanted to be able to, um, it's like one of those express my emotions. If I wanted to, you know, share the world that I, I feel love right now, or I'm angry or I'm sad, I want to be able to, you know, write it and create, you know, write a song to, to display that, you know. Um, I feel that with that, you have a lot of control, you know, and music is powerful. Music is powerful. I certainly agree. But I wondered, realistically, if the power of music was enough to sustain a living. I asked Tony how he kept himself afloat. Open your heart, I know you're angry. My day job. It's kind of, um, I'm going to start back in the beginning. Um, my first job was working at Disneyland. I worked at Disneyland and I was in a department called Outdoor Vending. And it was fun because um, I like to be around a lot of people and it was one of the biggest departments. And I met a lot of people there, it was really fun. Um, worked there for a few years and then thought, go, okay, I really need to do something. It was a great college job because it works around your schedule. Um, I uh, applied at Guitar Center, you know, and I got hired and worked there, um, learning all the instruments. I, was, I love music and I go, you know what, music store. So I was like, oh look, there's guitars, there's keyboards, there's all these things. Um, and so I was around the environment, and so um, I worked my way up to, to a store operations manager. Yeah. But while I was doing that, um, I was teaching drumline at a high school, uh, actually my old high school. My old band director had asked me, hey, can you come back to cover and teach these kids um, you know, some of the music just to, until we find someone? I go, sure, no problem. So I came by and I was like, oh, I remember this, you know, it was like my old high school. and so. 
I, I started learning and teaching them and they really enjoyed what I was teaching them. And like, I was like, oh, awesome. I never thought I would be a teacher. Um, had a really good, good time and then um, I just never stopped. You know, um, now my day job, um, I, I felt that was more rewarding because these kids, they, they would work so hard and they would enjoy performing. And it reminded me how it felt to perform. So I teach. And so um, I had left Guitar Center so that I could teach because to me it was more rewarding. I got more out of it. Um, it made me feel complete, I guess. And so I never stopped since then. And so now my, 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 my gig is I go to these high schools and uh, I, I write music and drill for the uh, marching band, the indoor drum line. And then let's, I basically go in there and coach them how to play. Kính thưa quý khán thính giả, một điều rất là đặc biệt ở trong chương trình hôm nay là tất cả những nhạc phẩm mà quý vị đang lắng nghe là những sáng tác của anh nhạc sĩ Tony T. Nguyễn, người khách mời của chúng tôi hôm nay. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the specialties of today's episode is all of the music you are hearing and will hear have been written by Tony T. himself. Yes, I'm in the um, 100%. I believe a couple of things. Um, one of the main things that I really, really like is the fact that if you take a look at the Vietnamese community and look at the families, there's generally it's a large number of people in the family, you know, to lots of brothers, sisters, or like aunts and uncles, and they all are together. Um, it's like they take care of each other, and whether someone's struggling or someone's doing well, they all share the success or the fears together. And to me, that's, that's a real big thing, you know, family-wise. And I'm a family person where I care about that. And I watch some of these families and I get inspired, you know. The reason why I get inspired is because um, I, I, I've seen a lot of families where they, like, they just talk really bad to their parents. You know, there's not, there's no respect. You know, I know there's all, like, I, I can remember ever since I was a kid, the main thing my dad would say, you gotta be respectful. I was like, okay, I understand. And so I do my best to, to be respectful to others. You know, I don't, it doesn't matter who they are or what they've done or not. It's just, I want to be respected. So in order to do that, I have, you know, to give respect to it, you know, so. Honestly, I, I believe so because you look around, it's, it's a common thing that's taught. I believe this is a Vietnamese characteristic. Um, because we're taught to always um, be respectful. And you, I, I, I could walk up to kids that are born here now and kids that are born back, you know, and adults, and it doesn't matter how old they are, if someone's older, they're all, yeah, you gotta be respectful, you know. Uh, they cook you food, you, you eat it, and you, know, you clean up, you know, you help do the dishes and, and all that stuff, you know. And, and sometimes, I gotta be honest, even myself, like, I tend to forget sometimes you know, the simplest things, like, you know, oh, help clean up the dishes or whatnot. Um, because in society we get so busy and we're if we're not around the culture that much, yeah. uh, we we tend to forget that, you know. And and every time I go home and spend time with the family, or I go over to someone's house and the Vietnamese family, uh, it's always, you know, oh, we have all this food. Make sure you eat. That's the main thing. It's like eat, no matter what, eat, you know, <laughs> or sing karaoke, uh, you know, uh, eat, and then um, you know, and then we all help clean up afterwards, you know. And to me, that's that's awesome. I mean. I've been alone a lot, you know, and, and, and being around people like that, it's, it would make someone a lot better, you know, like feel whole, that they, they're, they're wanted, they're a part of something, you know, and, and to me, respect and family, that's, that's huge. <laughs> 